So I just, this is GS from Tech Notice 2017 and today we are here with, you know, the next video about the iPad Pro, alright? So, as told earlier in earlier video that launch awaited update for Mac Mini, Mac Pro, iPads, all weighted. With the iPhone 10, we got a notch display with Face ID and removal of, you can say, home button all right but the only thing that was missing was headphone jack but iPads had it so we were all fine with it sort of somewhat open with it that it doesn't have a headphone jack and you know all that thing so when the new iPad Pro came out everybody was shocked excited and there are mixed feelings about everything. I mean, for fuck's sake, they removed the headphone jack from the iPad Pro, either 11 inch or 12.9 inch. So I don't know what they were thinking. All right, Mac Mini came with few and most very awesome updates and upgrades, like uh, you know. Uh, more doors at the base model and more more doors at the top model all right with more ram that to upgradable ram so you know awesome so <coughs> and with ssd with the really good um, nvme speed because apple's ssds are like you know awesome I'm actually trying to find one so that I can include that into my PC. Right, so I'm watching on it. I'm f uh, same thing I'm finding is Apple SSD to a M.2 converter. That'll be toughy. Right. So, but in this one, in the Mac Mini, it was soldered. It's not upgradable. Once you get it, you get it. You have to stick with that. But, you know, there are as it got Thunderbolt 3, so you can add like more storage at the back. Okay, enough about Mac Mini, iPad Pro. So what has Apple changed in iPad Pro? What is so revolutionary that everybody is asking and making videos and reviewing it? What is it? Is it the new USB Type-C, which we'll cover later on? Is it removal of the headphone jack? Or is it the new Face ID? So the Apple, I Apple iPad lineup has evolved considerably since the first iPad rolled out in 2012, right? Because there was nothing in that genre uh, at that time. There was Windows RT, which was like, you know, just plain old, you know, Windows tablet. And that we had for a long time. And we had Android tablets at that time. Uh, Nvidia's, uh, sorry, Dell's tablet lineup. Couple of 360s at that time also touched laptops, but there wasn't much that was like that powerful, even at that time. So, from convenient and 10 consumption devices to powerful laptop replacement, you know, computing devices, that journey leads to the latest evolution of the 2018 edition of the iPad Pro lineup. I am, I have actually, I have, this is all scripted, I'm reading from this side, alright, sorry for that. This is now in its third generation and its significant evolution over the predecessors which were very powerful in their own right. Okay, so iPad's biggest, uh, iPad's biggest accomplishment uh, this time around are all about what it doesn't have. First is the headphone jack. Second, no home button below the display. That means no more fingerprint sensor and we are moving towards Face ID on iPhones now and iPads. You know, it would be funny if we find an iPod without headphone jack. <laughs> that would be fucking hilarious. Yeah, true. Okay, and that has been enabled by gesture-based uh, controls, which iOS 12 bought along with it. While the iPhone 10 
ushered that era of the phone with no home buttons but not I hate it I hate it that's why I don't have an iPhone right now I'm using a Moto, Moto Z Play and the first gen pixel I hate iPhone 10 just because of that notch it's powerful and all but no and iPads had to wait a bit longer for that right that means the form factor can be kept more in check and yet have slightly larger displays than they used to have I've used uh, the iPad Pro 12.9 inch uh, 128 gig version cellular and Wi-Fi beauty I will say just one word beauty the displays like awesome the speakers are beautiful right I had with the keyboard and the pencil man I loved it the 120 Hertz refresh rate of the stream marvelous what you know but with the 11 inch model they have released that's a little on a different story we'll get back to you on that one right then there is no notch that out on the display that is what I'm happy about there is a notch on the iPad if there will be a notch on iPad trust me I will not use it I would have not used it right but I haven't used the new one yet all right there's all with the we can say that I've seen over time by other reviewers and you know with uh, what I've uh, you know read in the news and all but happily enough it isn't there in many ways the design is quite reminiscent of iPhone 5s thanks to the flat side spines so earlier it used to be like curved or a little bit of like textured served all right now it's just plain slab not like iPhone 5s 5 4s 4 s not 5c yeah and se and this new design is uh, it's dirt shaved uh, a lot has been shaved off from iPad Pro 12.92 and 5.9 millimeter thickness this is the thinnest iPad Pro ever and if you have seen the video of Jerry everything that I will try to you know put it up here it breaks like a snappy like you can just he just went like tuck and it was fucking done that to me is a bad design or structural stability a lot of magnets you can connect your pencil on top all that Right, but it's not structurally strong. All right, so the tech specs of the iPad Pro is as follows: the capacity comes in both 11 inch and 12.9 inch. That is 64 gigs, 256 gigs, 512, and one terabyte. That is huge. All right, and we got. Uh, nano sim tray smart connector USB-C connector volume up and down microphone magnetic connector for the Apple pencil and a 4k camera a lot like iPhone XR the camera in both are same all right uh, got a USB-C charge cable inside 18 watt USB-C power adapter screen resolution of 11 inch is 2388 by 1668 that's 254 pixels per inch all right and with liquid retina display so that's good I'm guessing both and with 12.9 inch it, it got 2732 by 2048 pixels resolution and 254 pixels per inch pro motion technology that's 120 Hertz that's a you know their fancy name of high refresh rate display True tone display, all right, and the processor is A12x Bionic chip with 64-bit architecture, neural engine, embedded M12 processor, which is quite snappy. I have seen a video of Jonathan Morrison of a guy making a music using that, and he, Jonathan Morrison himself, edited a full 4K video on the iPad. 
I'll try to link that video also in the description, all right? And whatever I'll be speaking, I'll be mentioning everything in the description. Uh, 12 megapixel camera, f1.8, digital zoom up to 5x, 5 element lens, toward LED true tone flash, Panor panorama up to 53 megapixels, hybrid infrared filter, right, 4K going up to 30 FPS or 60 FPS, which is nice. I can always take just 60 FPS camera over anything. Front is 720p, 30 FPS. Oh no, sorry, sorry. Uh, 1080p at 3060, 720 at 30 FPS. Uh, slow motion 1080p 120 and 720p at 240. So it's Apple. The cameras are good, right? Cinematic video stabilization in 1080p and 720p only. And HVC Kodak and H.264. Front camera is 7 megapixel, 1080p HD 30 or 60, f2.2 aperture, f1.8, oh, that's it. And uh, live photos, smart HDR, that was a gate that recently came, uh, what was the name of it? Uh, beauty gate, yeah, beauty gate. FaceTime audio, audio and everything, that Wi-Fi. All model have 802.11 ABGC, ABGNAC, simultaneous dual band 2.4 and 5 gigahertz, HT80 with multi in multi out, Bluetooth 5.0 technology, data, to all, data only, Wi-Fi calling, eSIM, that's for India, if someone wants a dual SIM or, sorry, no, 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 uh, this one is actually if someone doesn't have a like a SIM, he can get to one like an eSIM, like in UK or US, I'm guessing. So that's the one. Nano SIM. Ah, yeah. Uh, and enabled by True Depth Camera for facial recognition. Unlock iPad. As I told earlier, Face ID is there. Right with that projector lamp and all. Secure personal data within apps. You can buy stuff from it with iOS 12. You know, Apple was doing a lot better when they had the headphone jack and the home sensor, the fingerprint sensor in the iPads. But the latest one, it's powerful, no doubt. They have shown in the, uh, the launch that they were playing NBA 2K19 on it, close to a uh, Xbox quality on it. But the thing is, if someone is buying an iPad, they don't need it for gaming. They might need it for like official work, all right? Or they might need for something else. Gaming is the least concern for a guy who's buying an iPad. And if a person is spending, uh, how much is it anyway? The base model? And I'm gonna give this answers in US dollar, so, all right? So Apple was doing a lot better with the earlier iPads, all right? But now if we see this, if we consider an 11 inch iPad, that's 799, the base model. 12.9 is a thousand dollars all right and one terabyte will be 1749 that's close that's more than a laptop and if someone is buying that and if you want cellular then you will have to pay 1899 yeah 1899 close to two thousand dollars you have to pay for a 12.9 inch space today one terabyte Wi-Fi plus cellular iPad, which is really bad. So the takeaway here is, I don't think that I can recommend it for like a lot of people around, all right? But what I can say is, if you want an iPad, grab an older one. Take a, I don't know, iPad Air 2, much better. Price wise. Performance wise, yes, you can play PUBG or Fortnite in it. But go with that. Don't go with some flashy thing. But if you have money, by all means, take it. Alright? And that's all for today. Alright? Uh, soon I'll be putting in one more video about the Mac Mini, the follow up. Right? Spoiler alert. 
it's going to be Pontus because I'm gonna use a lot of fucking shit in it. Trust me, you're gonna like it. Alright, sayonara, bye.